Good morning. Now we go to Kirchhoff's diffraction theory that's based on Kirchhoff's integral theorem. And from that we will derive something called fresnel kirchhoff formula. And as we have seen last uh, in the last class, the field amplitude or the optical disturbance, what we call it, UP is equal to this one here. Uh, and uh, in that case, we have assumed a surface. Okay. Here also we have a surface. It's a spherical surface. Now this is the surface, yes. And we have the point of interest, P, inside uh, the oleum enclosed by the surface. Here, uh, we have uh, defined some distances from the source we have a spherical wave front coming out and uh, the distance from the source to the upper the center of the aperture is r and uh, here we have the distance as s the radius of uh, the sphere or the surface that we have considered is r and this is uh, this black line plus this red line plus this green line plus this they constitute the full surface now i have divided the surface into three regions for obvious reasons that we will see later on this is c that's this black part here and b it's the red part over here and uh, over here. Now we have the aperture, which is defined as A. Okay. Now uh, our wave is a monochromatic wave that is coming from a point source, propagating through the opening of a plane opaque screen. Okay. This screen that we have placed is opaque. And P is the point at which light disturbance UP to be determined. We also assume that the linear dimensions of the openings are large compared to the wavelength. That is normally the case. And small compared to R and S. Okay. The uh, source and the observation point are relatively far compared to the the this dimension here okay. this opening is much smaller compared to r and s and also it is much larger compared to lambda now two assumptions u and delta u uh, at the aperture are the same as they would be in the absence of the partition. Okay. In the absence of the partition, we have the source here, and then we place the uh, partition here. But our assumption is that it is uh, relatively straightforward. Uh, even if the aperture was not there, we would have the same field in the opening, opening region here. We will have the same field even in the absence of the aperture. Means the presence of the aperture does not alter the field at this uh, in this region except very close to the uh, edge of the aperture. They would be in the absence of the part. U and delta U contributes negligible amounts to the integral except at the aperture opening. Okay. U, what is U? U is the field at uh, the uh, at the point uh, inside the inside this uh, enclosure, and that uh, U and delta U contributes negligible amounts to the integral except at the aperture opening. Okay, we'll see how that comes. And uh, capital S is the surface over which 
we make the integration. I have redrawn the same picture here. As I said, the upper uh, the surface S is formed by three regions A, B. A B is in the non illuminated part of uh, the screen in both sides. A is the opening, and C is uh, the rest of the surface. Portion C has a large sphere of radius R centered at P. Now, A, B, and C form the closed surface. And therefore, uh, we can divide the surface integral into three regions surface integral uh, in the region A, surface integral in the region B, and surface integral in this region C. And we use the script of um, um, integral. What was that? UP is UP was UP or uh, U, U, or UP or 1 over 4 pi integral surface integral U dou by dou n of e to the power i k s over s minus e to the power i k s over s dou u over dou n ds that was your uh, Fernakitsa formula now uh, this smallest is okay this is smallest is the distance of the element ds from p where is ds ds is uh, uh, if you consider the spherical surface ds is a small area element on the on this surface that is cap capital ds d capital s now do by do n as i said last class do by de, do n is the is del the gradient uh, the normal to the surface and uh, therefore uh, we'll see how we can do do by do n and the difficulty is u and do u by do n on a b c are never known exactly again to make uh, two assumptions everywhere on a a is that opening except in the immediate neighborhood of the rim of the aperture u and do u by do n will not appreciably different from the value obtained in the absence of the screen okay that was the assumption that we have already made and on b u and do u by do n are approximately zero because that's uh, in in a way that is uh, understandable because uh, at this point here it is immediately behind the screen and u the optical disturbance there can be assumed equal to zero in that region and therefore do u by do n also uh, is uh, zero if u is zero then from the first assumption if uh, on A, U is equal to Ui, which is the incident case, when there was no aperture. And do U by do N is uh, do Ui. I refers to the incident uh, wave without or in the absence of the screen. Okay. U equal to 0 at B and and these are called Kirchhoff boundary conditions and that forms the basis for Kirchhoff diffraction theory. I have redrawn the thing without the surface here just to let you know the angles and other things. Okay, here we have the region A. This is your region A and on from here we have a normal that is pointing inwards the to the integral surface that's n here we have the distance from the source to the center of the aperture is r and uh, the angle between 
R and N is N R. I denote it by N R. Means uh, maybe we can uh, use something like uh, theta, and maybe here here it is the angle between S and N. The angle between S and N is this one here, and maybe you can use phi. But for now, we will use N R means the angle between the normal. Uh, unit vector along the normal to the surface and the incident vector r and uh, n s means it is the angle between s and uh, the normal to the surface now we can assume a spherical wave front here a, a spherical wave e to the power i k r from uh, over R, that is uh, the wave coming from the source, and here A is a constant. I have used a curly A just to distinguish it with, uh, from the surface A, the normal A. And uh, di u by di n, in that case, okay, it is the component of the derivative along. Uh, you along the normal that means you have to add this cos factor di u by di n means di by do by do r of ui okay uh, that is the component along uh, uh, the surface normal uh, that you can since the angle is uh, between them surface normal and r is cos nr uh, is sorry nr then you can uh, use this thing therefore do u by do n is do by do r of uh, ui cos nr and if you do the uh, differentiation by parts this is what you are get, going to get this is again ui i k minus 1 by r cos nr okay that is what that is the contribution from uh, from a now consider the contributions from c uh, now suppose you have a point source at some point okay it is going to propagate with the speed of light and if you have started the uh, radiation at t is equal to t0 then uh, the for time t it may have traveled a distance of t minus okay t t0 t minus t0 it that is the distance is going to travel at uh, um, time uh, t or the wave front will have reached a point which is distant c times t minus t0 from the source from p0 now radius of region filled with radiation at time t is not greater than t minus c into t minus t0 from p p0 we can now choose the radius r in such a way that at the time of considering the field at p no contribution from c would have reached p okay okay what is what does it mean let's go back to the figure now the contribution fenner uh, law says that uh, the contributions at p comes from secondary sources it is the sum of contributions from secondary sources that is from the surface now uh, we have seen that from b there is no contribution uh, from a we have seen there, there are contributions and from c we we uh, choose the time uh, in such a way that the contributions from c does not have time to reach the point uh, p and therefore we can neglect 
the contributions from uh, the point uh, from the surface C. And therefore, the integral over C will vanish. And the, the okay, if you, uh, we have to choose the radius in such large enough so that there is no contributions from C to the point B. And therefore, uh, we can substitute all this in, in the equation. And therefore, you have the field contribution or the total field at point P is the sum of contributions from A, B, and C. And this is part of the Fresnel, uh, uh, the Kirchhoff integral. Uh, we have seen that the contributions from B and C are zero. Therefore, the only contribution that comes is uh, from A. I should have used the curly A here. Uh, okay. Now, uh, e to the power, okay, just uh, do the uh, integration, sorry, differentiation by parts. Dou by dou n, as we have seen, that is dou by dou s, uh, e to the power i k s over s cos n s. That's what we have done here. And also for the u is for the other one, you have uh, cos n r, that is the normal component. And therefore, here again, it is going to be the curly a e to the power as i a k over 4 pi with this one. Or if you take uh, the common factor out, this is what you get as the uh, uh, contribution or the intensity, sorry, not the intensity, it's the field distribution or the optical disturbance as we call it because we are dealing with the scalar quantity. UP uh, at point P, at point P, will be given by this. This is again that fancy Kelly A. And this is integrated over the surface A, or that surface is the aperture, or that is your source. And each point on this source will act as a secondary source. Okay, then we will see that. Uh, e to the power i k oh, in k into r plus s over r s with uh, these uh, two angles integrated over the surface. And this surface is the surface area element is the area element from the source itself, the region A, nothing else. And this is uh, the mathematical statement of uh, uh, the Huygens principle. Now we can uh, apply this uh, formula to the specific case of a circular aperture with the source symmetrically located. I have put uh, the source symmetric with respect to the aperture. Uh, this is R0 is the distance from the source to the aperture. And actually, I should have kept this P0 at the radius of curvature. Okay. Only then we will see that this is the uh, okay, wavefront. Now, uh, R in this case is R0 cos n r0, okay, r0 and n, they are parallel, and therefore the angle is 0, and therefore it is going to be 1, and the chi here uh, is pi minus the angle between r0 and s, r0 and s. Now, 
now uh, again uh, just to recap uh, this is your funnel kitchen formula that we have just derived uh, here we have the amplitude a constant a and uh, up is given by this and if you substitute all these values for for the case of, for the special case of spher spherical wave uh, this is what you are going to get uh, up is minus i over 2 lambda okay uh, a that is this uh, constant a e to the power i k r0 over r0 so uh, here you have r0 you can take that out uh, out of the integral because it's a uh, constant and this is what you get okay now um, this thing here is uh, represents a spherical wave that comes uh, a distance that solves a distance s to the point p or in other words this actually represents the secondary sources from the aperture itself each point these are the secondary sources each point or that's why it is called the mathematical statement of um, the Huygens principle now uh, uh, th since these these things are all constants we can use uh, this as a constant ua substitute for uh, this value here and that becomes the complex amplitude of the incident wave at the aperture. This is e to the power i k zero by k r zero over r zero multiplied by uh, the constant that we have used initially, and that is the amplitude of the incident wave at the aperture. Uh, each element d s of the aperture gives rise to a secondary spherical wave like this one this is what it is or i have rewritten uh, rearranging the terms this here and this as the secondary uh, source of radiation therefore uh, according to this equation here according to this uh, equation here it is a sum over this secondary wavelengths okay. and therefore the total optical disturbance at p is the sum of contributions of secondary waves from each element and the factor minus i over 2 lambda times 1 plus cos uh, chi uh, is let's call it k chi it is called the inclination factor because it depends on chi and that chi is what it is cos pi minus what was it pi minus pi minus r0 s yes. it is the uh, angle between pi minus the angle between r0 and s and that is um, the inclination factor for example if, if you're considering point p at this point the sky is going to change and therefore uh, the inclination factor is going to change and uh, this is what is called the inclination factor or obliquity factor for the central zone chi equal to zero and the inclination factor is minus i over lambda
Now, if you look at uh, some of the interesting properties of the uh, Fernakachov formula, uh, it is symmetrical with respect to the source and point of observation. It means if we had the source here, source, and uh, the aperture here, then we had the point of observation somewhere on the other side of the thing. Here we had uh, R, here we had Suppose we replace, uh, we, we um, change the source to here and the observation point on the other side without changing anything else. Just symmetrically change the source and, point and the observation point. And uh, you can see that because uh, then what will you do is you replace R with S and S with R. Here also you do the same thing. And therefore, uh, even then it's not going to change uh, uh, anything. That's why we call it is reciprocal. It implies that if you, are, if you place the source at point P instead of P0, then the intensity at P0, intensity at the point here, okay. if you place the source here, the intensity at the point will be represented exactly by the same equation. And uh, this is called, this is sometimes referred to as re reciprocity theorem or reversion theorem of Helmholtz. The next uh, thing that is of interest is Babinet's principles of complementary approaches. Babinet's principle. In this case, uh, we are talking about complementary approaches. Okay. Suppose we have a, an aperture like this. What, what does it mean? Okay, this is an infinitely long uh, screen and you have the source here. The light goes to the other side here only through this aperture. Okay. Every, everywhere else except this small opening here is opaque to the radiation that is coming from here. What is complementary to this? is complementary to this is this one. You block the light in exactly the same region and leave light through all other regions. Okay. And there, these two, this uh, aperture here is complementary to this screen here. That is, uh, uh, consider two screens one with an opening and the other with an opaque portion such that openings of uh, openings correspond exactly to the opaque portions of the others and vice versa. Okay, that's what I have explained just now. Okay, now U and P. Okay. You, you take uh, the point uh, source here P0. Now, at some point P, you find uh, the um, field distribution, and let's say that is U and P. U and P is a complex displacement at point P, screen one. Okay, let's say this is screen one. Now, you, you take uh, screen two with a complementary aperture, like this one, and uh, uh, here you have the source, P0, and at some point here you have P, and you take this as U2P. Now, uh, UP is the, uh, the field distribution, and there is no screens, no screen 6%. If U1 and U2 can be expressed as integrals over the openings, the 
and since the openings in two screens just add up to fill the whole space u1p u2p up that is uh, relatively straightforward to uh, assume because uh, uh, no, i mean um, it is called babinus principle with uh, with this thing you have u1p u1p and with this thing you have u2p and uh, if you don't have this and this you have up up and uh, that uh, the babinus principle says that u1p plus u2p is up the field distribution uh, just adds adds up that uh, with that you can make uh, a few uh, conclusions that is u1 okay what was that u1 plus u2 is u that is our babinus principle at points at which the intensity is zero in the presence of one of the screens the intensity in the presence of the other is the same as if no screen was present okay suppose uh, we have a screen u1 u1 alone and the field distribution as you know it could be as you have seen it could be like this for example at some point it is going to be zero some point is maximum and there are secondary maximum you have seen in the first uh, uh, okay that is what diffraction is and uh, okay with this screen u1 alone this point the field is zero u1 equal to zero if u1 equal to zero then with the other screen with the other screen at this point here where uh, there was zero intensity it will be u the intensity will be u according to babinus principle intensity is the presence of the other is same uh, as if no screen was present okay it, it just uh, comes from this factor here u1 this is zero which means u2 equal to u and if u without any of these screens if u was zero at some point uh, in this uh, region okay u what is u u is the intensity without any screens if that was seen then u1 should have been minus u2 because uh, u1 plus u2 equal to zero okay u, u, u1 and u2 can be negative because uh, these are fields not intensities okay uh, can you state that at points where u equal to zero the phases of u1 and u2 differ by phi but that's what it means the sign uh, and the intensities are i1 u1 square i2 and they are equal i1 equals i2 if in the absence uh, to to sum up if in the absence of any of the screens the intensity at certain point is zero which means if you use two complementary approaches uh, u1 and uh, okay u2 Uh, or one and two, upper there's one and two. Then u one will be minus u two. They are out of phase by phi. And uh, but that doesn't mean that the intensity is zero. I one is proportional to u one square. I two is proportional to u two square. 
whether uh, it doesn't matter what phase it is and therefore i1 also equal to i2 okay what have we seen today that is um, uh, we have seen the frontal kirchhoff formula we have derived it from the kirchhoff integral and the kirchhoff integral itself we uh, to derive that we have used the green's theorem in the last class then we have applied frontal kirchhoff diffraction formula to a spherical uh, wave applied um, it to specific case of circular aperture the source symmetrically located symmetrically placed a uh, spherical aperture and then um, have defined inclination factor or oblique g factor then again we uh, described what babinet's principle is babinet's principle is about complementary apertures and it's very simple if you know this uh, u1 plus u2 equals u think back and see what one and two are one and two are complementary apertures and uh, this uh, tells you the relation between the amplitudes of the waves when we use uh, two complementary approaches and we compare it with uh, the case of uh, no approach okay with that uh, we conclude for today thank you